Welcome to the second part of Evolution of Trade Post 1991 Reforms. In the previous part, we discussed about the series of events which led India to adopt the reforms and India's approach to, to international trade prior and during the 1990s. In this video, we shall discuss how India's international trade evolved and will also focus on the current scenario. First, let's see the new commodity trade world. Post independence, the foreign exchange trade was accentuated in 1962 during the border dispute with China. Morarji Desai, then fi finance minister, came out with the Gold Control Act 1962, which recalled all gold loans given by banks and banned forward trading in gold. In 1963, production of gold, generally about 14 can finesse, was banned. In 1965, a gold bond scheme was launched with a tax immunity for unaccounted for. All these states failed to yield their desired result. This I finally introduced the Gold Control Act on 24th August 1968, which prohibited citizens from owning gold in the form of bars and coins. All existing holding of gold coins and bars had to be converted into jewelry and declared to the authorities. Goldsmiths were not allowed to own more than 100 grams of gold. Licensed dealers were not supposed to own more than 2 kg of gold, depending upon the number of artisans of world oil. They were banned from trading with each other. Thus, I believe that India's, India would respond positively to these steps and stop consuming gold and help conserve precious foreign exchange. But instead, new gold jewelry purchases were either recycled or smuggled gold. This gold was smuggled in and sold through the unofficial channel wherein many jewelers and bullion traders traded in smuggled gold. A huge black market developed for gold. Goldsmiths were unorganized laborers force and could not cope up with the new situation. That was the problem. Only a few could get the license to hold gold that were also in very small quantity. With the result that uh, the members of the Sunar, Sunar caste, who were depending only on their traditional occupation for making gold and ornament, lost their business and their financial condition deteriorated and their families shattered. In 1990, India had major foreign exchange problem and was on the verge of default on external liabilities. The Indian government pledged 40 tons of gold from their reserves with the Bank of India, Bank of England and save the deal. Subsequently, India embarked upon the path of economic liberalization. The era of licensing was gradually dissolved. The gold market also benefited because the government abolished the 1962 Act on 6 June 1990 and liberalized the gold imports into India on payment of duty of at least 250 per ton. The government thought it more prudent to allow free imports and taxes rather than to lose it to all unofficial channels. From official imports of practical nothing in 1991, India officially imported more than 100 tons, 110 tons of coal in 1992, which in September 1999, the government also launched a gold deposit scheme to use, utilize the idle gold and simultaneously give a return to gold owners and, and reduce the country's reliance on imports. However, the plan was not widely accepted by population. Crude oil India has always been dependent on the import of the crude oil to meet its uh, domestic demand. As the economy opened up, the demand was even higher than ever before. Meanwhile, not much, not much emphasis was laid on domestic production and as you can see, after the Kuwait oil shock that occurred in 1990, the imports of crude oil rose rapidly in India. Exim Policy of 2004 During this period, the main emphasis was on providing the atmosphere to unleash the innate entrepreneurship of businessmen and industrialists. And by trade and traders by simplifying the procedures and bringing down the transaction costs, neutralizing neutralizing incidence of all levies and duties on imports, inputs used in export products, based on the fundamental principle that duties and levies should not be exported. 
and facilitating development of India as a global hub for manufacturing and trading services. Also, identifying and nurturing special focus area which will generate additional employment opportunities. Exim policy of 2009. The short term objective of this exim policy was to arrest and reverse the declining trend of exports and provide additional support, especially to those sectors which have been hit badly by the recession in the developed world and to average and to achieve an average annual growth rate of exports of 25% over the next six years. During the period 2009-2010, the rupee started to gain against the dollar and the effect that could be seen on the trade deficit as well. Eventually, the rupee fell drastically after 2020. Evolution of India's trade balance After the 1991, primary deficit has declined much due to the rising interest payment and to some extent a decline in fiscal deficit. Revenue deficit was incurred in the period 1971-72 and 72-73. It was 0.57% in 1979 to 1980. After that, after that it increased to 3.26% in 1990-91. It reached a maximum of 5.25% of GDP in 2009. The average revenue deficit as a percentage of GDP in 1980s, 1990s and 2000 has been 1.72%, 3.02% and 3.04% respectively. It was 4.46% of GDP during the period of 2011 the rapid growth of demand for imports led to chronic current account deficit. The trade balance was negative in all years from 1991 to 2010. It peaked as percentage of GDP in years of India's first post-independence balance of payment crisis in 1956-57 at 4.8% of GDP remained in the 3-4% range in the 1960s was again as a response to the oil and commodity price increases of the early 1970s and again in that range in the 1980s. Now as you can see these are the following features of an uh, exim policy of 2015. Coming up to the GSP, GSP is considered to be the largest and the oldest US trade preference program that provides non-reciprocal duty-free treatment enabling many of the world's developing countries to spur diversity and economic growth through trade. Economic development is promoted by eliminating duties on thousands of products when imported from designated beneficiaries, countries and territories. Authorized by the Trade Act of 1974 and implemented on January 1, 1976, the GSP program imposes quantitative ceiling called Competitive Need Limitation CNLS. On GSP benefits for all tariff items and beneficiary de developing countries. Under certain circumstances, these ceiling may be waived. In April 2018, the Office of the Trade, uh, U.S. Trade Representatives initiated a review of India's eligibility on GSP on the grounds that India had de declined adequate access to its agricultural and dairy markets and had placed prohibitive prices control on medical devices. In March, in March 2019, President Trump's administration announced that it would revoke India's GSP status since India failed to make improvements. India's GSP benefits were terminated in June 9, 2019. Consequently, special duty treatment on uh, $5.6 billion worth of exports to the US was removed, affecting India's export-oriented sectors such as pharmaceuticals, textiles, agricultural products, and automotive products. India was the largest beneficiary of GSP program at the time of withdrawal in June 1929. Therefore, it was anticipated that the potential losses to the Indian export industry would be substantial. In total, 1,945 Indian products were covered under the GSP program. The tariff concession for these products were fell above $241 million, which translates 
to the total cost of India bore due to the withdrawal of GSP, GSP status. COVID-19 and its, and its impact on the trade. The uncertain global trade situation caused by the pandemic severely, uh, severely, severely hit global merchandise trade in 2020. And India was not immune to the impact. Exports in fiscal year 2020-21 amounted to a total of 291.8 US dollar billion dollars, sorry, declining 6.8 percent. Among the top exported items, mineral fuel, gems, and precious metals were the two most exported items for a combined share of 18 percent. 2021 also predictably witnessed a surge in the performance of pharmaceutical industry imports during fiscal year 2020-21 and on the other hand saw a decline of more than 16 percent amounting to 394 billion us dollars mineral fuels and precious metals and metals remain the top imported items with an increase in demand for animal vegetable fats and India achieved all-time high annual merchandise export of $470.81 billion in fiscal year 2021-22, an increase of 43.18% over $291.81 billion in fiscal year 2020-2021, and an increase of 33.33% over $300. And 13.36 billion in fiscal year 2019-20. India's merchandise export rise by 16.8 percent to 37.9 billion dollars in June 2020, recording the highest ever exports in June 2022. Imports rose 62.8 percent on the year amid surging purchase of purchase values of petroleum, crude, and other products on back of soaring commodity prices. At the same time, exports rose at a softer 20.6%, falling for second straight month as geopolitical concerns surrounding uh, Russia-Ukraine war hurt shipments. Now that's all for the video. Please consider liking and subscribing to our channel to get more updates on such topics. Thank you.